midday at 1230, compassion is something that the world needs way more of. Dr. Melissa Carver joins us with tips on how we can be more compassionate towards one another. Plus, it's crash day here on midday. The owner of Meyer Woodwork will be here to challenge our artistic skills. This is Midday Kentucky. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us on Midday at 1230. I'm Amber Freeman. And I'm Adam Banks. It's such a rainy day. Um, I guess I wasn't in the news last night. And I didn't know that it was going to rain, but it's one of those sleep days. It is. I had to take my canoe to get to work this morning or this afternoon. So dramatic. But I don't understand how people enjoy rain all the time. Once every now and then is fine, but I just don't trust people who can live in an environment where it rains all of the time. I'm too busy for it to be raining today. What do you mean? Cause raining, it gives you that excuse to stay indoors. But where, did, like, are, where, are you talking like the rainforest, like in Brazil? No, like um, Portland, Oregon, doesn't it rain a lot there? Seattle, it rains a lot there. I just have constant headaches when it rains. So I just think if I lived in an environment like that, I would just walk around with a constant headache all of the time. Hey, to each their own. Does I your love, head not hurt? No, I, I love thunderstorms. When I moved out west, we didn't have very many of them. So we're in Florida, it storms every single day in the summer, and then you go to none of it, and I missed it. So no, I love the humidity. Love it. No, I think they call that biometric pressure is what makes your head hurt. Look it up. Barometric. Oh, barometric. Sorry. That's what happens when the weather lady is here to getting, correct me. Getting schooled by <laughs> meteorologist Alyssa Andrews, and I love you. <laughs> well, I hope your headache goes away. Um, speaking of headaches and compassion, we brought that up. You shared your Valentine's date weekend <sighs> story over the weekend. Not the story, but you said um, basically that <laughs> your date was ungrateful. She was just, she complained a You're, lot. Uh, listen, mm. I don't, I want you to stop. Yeah, let's not go I'm down that. I'm going to save you. Yes. I'm going to not lead, yeah. It's a rabbit hole that I'm going down again. One day you will learn women, <laughs> Adam Banks. One day you'll learn women. Did it's she, just, it's did just. Did she different. watch? She did not. And I saw that we posted it online and I was like, you know, I want to post it because it's a great show. So I went through and I posted it and just did the whole hide your certain friends and hid certain people from the show. We'll see how that works out now. Because now they're going to go and tell that I did that. I, one, I, day, one day I'll I learn. I really want to say something, but I also want to just sit here and let you keep talking. <laughs> I'm going to save you. I hope that she did not see it. Guess what you might need? Guess what she might need? It's National Drink Wine Day, oh, and you good. both probably need that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we have several fun facts related to a very broad subject that many of you may not have known. Did you know this? 42% of Americans prefer red wine. That's funny. I prefer white. I like white, too, I think. But I will take either. Yeah, it's a lot sweeter. See, I don't like the sweet. It's, I mean, but not all white wine sweet. I'm not a wine expert, but a lot of it's very dry. And oh, I didn't I know prefer that. 16% um, of Americans don't know anything about the different types of wine. That's, I, that's true. Like I was telling you before we went on the air, I didn't realize that liquor bar could fill up an entire store of alcohol, but they can because there's that many liquors in the world. Adam was sharing a story that when he first walked into, I'm sure you know, we have a couple warehouses that are just full of alcohol, but they also <laughs> have really great gifts in there. Just a little, uh, That's true. little hint there that you didn't realize there was that much alcohol in the world. <laughs> I there's, didn't. There's a lot more. It's a big business. Yeah. America's favorite wine is Merlot. Second place, Zinfandel. I've heard of Merlot, not heard of the second word. Heard of Chardonnay. Okay, so fancy. Well that's, that's in third place. I think that's something fancy people drink, though, Chardonnay. Everybody in here is shaking their oh, heads common. at you and saying no. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep my opinion <laughs> to myself, but I wish I had everybody's faces on camera oh, right now. Is that now. the cheap one? Well, 74% of Americans drink two glasses of wine per day. That's crazy to me. That is. I mean, because that's a lot. And I think a lot of the times we like to disguise that, oh, it's not alcohol because it tastes like high C. But what kind of wine are you drinking? What it tastes wine? like high C. Very sweet. I don't even 
think that the fact that it's a lot, I'm just surprised that many people drink every day. When it tastes so good, it's, it's easy to do. Do you drink wine coolers? Do we need to have <laughs> an intervention here? <laughs> I'm actually not that big of a drinker. All right, well, honest. 9% say wine gives them the worst hangovers. I agree, wine hangovers can be pretty bad. Yes. Not that I've ever had one, but you know. Yes. 3% always cry when they drink wine. I hope that is not you. 30% blah, 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 finished by have not had a bottle of wine. But 37% of you have finished a bottle by yourself. 9% buy boxed wine because it's cheap, not Chardonnay. <laughs> And 42% think a $10 bottle is a nice bottle of wine. So, there you go. Like me. Um, if you have any tips for Adam on, on maybe to choose one that doesn't taste like high C, go on our social <laughs> media and let him know. He also may need one after girl finds out. Yes. Stay with us. Dr. Melissa Carver joins us with tips on how to be compassionate. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Well, climate change, sex trafficking for the unwilling, child animal abuse, so many stories to be compassionate about. How does it affect us and what can we do about it? We don't often talk about that. Dr. Melissa Carver is here to discuss compassion overload and why it's so important to have compassion for one another. Thank you so much, Dr. Carver, for being here. Hi, thank you all for having me again. Well, we love when you're here, Dr. Carver. And thank you know, you. Yes. all week, I guess it's only been two days, <laughs> we've been talking about Random Acts of Kindness Week and how it's so important to be nice to each other. But there's a difference between compassion and kindness. Can you kind of break that down for us? It, well, first of all, can I say we have to remember to be compassionate and kind to ourselves. And I think a lot of times people who are compassionate and want to be kind to others kind of put themselves on the back burner a little too often for too long. And that has to have some long-term effects. What, why do we need to avoid doing that and how do we check ourselves? Well, we can become overly fatigued and in today's time where we're all working extra and not getting enough sleep, that's already an issue so we don't want to add to that. And then we become emotionally just kind of traumatized and at some point we start snipping at each other and not even being aware of why we're doing that. And then the people who are kind in turn kind of self beat themselves up about being snippy. So it's just this never ending circle. So we have to be very mindful of how we're treating ourselves. So if I'm understanding this correctly, compassion overload is that that's what that is, is just having too much compassion where it affects your own self. Exactly. Too much compassion for too many things over and over continuously. With social media today, there's just so many things in our face that we should be compassionate about. The world is telling us you need to care about this, you need to care about that, you need to put your time, energy, and effort here. But the problem is we need to choose one or two that we are the most compassionate about. We want to show the most kindness toward, we want to educate people on. Research and education is always fabulous and I suggest doing that across the board in all aspects but not taking each one on as our own and being too empathetic. And are some people just more apt to be empathetic than others and kind of feel things a little bit more? Absolutely, yes. And then that probably causes a little bit of an issue because then you feel bad about not caring about all the other things that you want to be caring about. Right. So it's hard to narrow that down. How do you focus it down to just those few issues? Research and deciding which ones are the most important to you and why. And then what if you feel bad about the ones that you're kind of leaving? Well, that's when you just kind of decide, you know what, I'm just going to give this to the other people that have chose these things for their one, two, or three things. Gotcha. Is it possible to care too much? Though? Absolutely. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that sounds horrible, but when we start neglecting ourselves, mm -hmm. we can't pour from an empty cup. We've all heard this, but it's so very true. We have to be compassionate and kind to ourselves every day just as much, if not more, than other people. Oh yeah, I definitely agree with that. Well, and it, I think a lot of people struggle with that because in doing that, taking care of ourselves may feel selfish. We mm -hmm. put all these terms on it. So how can we avoid this compassionate overload in other ways if other people start to, they expect it from us. They so do. then how do we change their mindset to say, hey, we can't do that anymore? Conversation, talking about it, letting them know how and why this is happening. Like, I love that you are so enthusiastic about this topic 
and I will support you as a person, but I can't put my energy in all of the baskets. These are the things that are important to me, and I'm cheering you on. That's really, really great advice, Dr. Carpenter. And I want to real quick get to something because you have advice for women coming up. You have a retreat. I do have a retreat coming up, and it's for men and women. Oh, um, it's called the 2020 Rejuvenation Retreat, and I highly suggest whether it's one of our events or someone else's, is taking that time to unplug, to give yourself that self-care for two, three days, five days, seven days, however long, ours is three days, but however long that is for you and not feeling guilty about it, especially as a parent, whether you're a mother or a father, we often say, oh, well, I can't, I can't unplug for three days mm -hmm. because I'm gonna have to leave my kids and they need to go to baseball or whatever it is they have going on. Okay, that's great, but we do that every day of the year when are we going to give ourselves two or three days and say, you know what, you're just going to have to miss out on that that weekend. I love that you're doing that, and I love that you so said cool. you can't pour from an empty cup because mm -hmm. you can't really help others if you're not helping yourself. Where can we find more information about the retreat and your services? Uh, DrMelissaCarver.com, and we also have some scholarships for those overcoming drug addiction, and New Circle Auto Sales is helping us do that with giving some of their sales, 10% of their sales for the last two weeks of February. So if anyone knows anyone interested in buying a car, please just go over and check them out because if you do purchase from there, that's going to help also be kind. Absolutely. And still yeah. just, <laughs> you know, indirectly being kind. Sure. <laughs> Butterfly effect there. Well, exactly. we love what you're doing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Definitely check out our website. Think about going to this retreat. It's, as she said, it's crucial to take care of yourself. We love when you're here. Thanks for being Thank here. You. Thank you. Stay with us. Well, time is next. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. You know her. We have the owner of M Hire Woodwork, Molly Hire, here with us today. Thank you so much for I being am here. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome to the show, Mo Molly Hire. How are you? <laughs> I am doing well. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little flubber there on the teleprompter. Yeah, I, was like, you're okay. I don't know what's happening with this, what I'm reading. Well, so. Molly, you always are doing DIY stuff for us. You do, we've done door hangers, we make crafts, mm. all kinds of stuff. Your new big thing, it's not new for you, but it's new that you're releasing kind of out to the public, is staining wood. Yes, well, this is just um, one of the things that I'll be doing. Uh, my big thing is really teaching people how to DIY. You know, it's a money saver to be able to have these ability. You don't have to hire someone out. Although if you do want to hire someone out, you can totally <laughs> hire me. But I, I'm just trying to teach uh, small groups of people the basics of, you know, staining wood or painting something so that they can get the confidence and build those skills and then eventually do a project of their own. Well, that's, you kind of take the fear away because when I first met you, I was like, whoa, this <laughs> is such a, like a, a baddie. She like, works with saws, she does all <laughs> kinds of power tools, you do all this kind of thing. So real quick, staining wood, what do we look for, what do we do? So the thing that I just really want to showcase today is there's two pieces of wood right here and just like anything you do, like think about makeup, washing your face, putting primer on, you always, the prep work is the key to having any success. So these two pieces of wood, this one um, was no sanding, it was just a piece of wood that I purchased, cut and threw the stain on. And as you can see, it did not go on properly. It is not smooth. Or this oh, one, yeah. I actually um, sanded and smoothed out and cleaned it off. And as you can tell, I mean, the finished product You is can see such a big difference because here so it's kind of like rough. Yes, so not much better. <laughs> and I think that's um, something that people kind of like don't realize is there is a lot of prep work that goes into it. And if they don't do it, they're not going to get the finished look. And stain, I mean, it's going to be almost different every single time. So... So for someone who hasn't stained much and you're a first time stainer, yeah. what's the uh, easiest thing to start out with? Honestly, I think the easiest thing to do is practice first. They always say, you know, take a, you know, do a spot on something, you know, and see what it looks like or get a piece of unfinished wood and practice because it takes quite a while. Well, and Molly, you have some really cool classes coming up where you're going to actually teach us how to do this. Yes, in the uh, month of April, I will be offering a couple of free um, classes for people to sign up, and it'll be 
different things like DIY, how to stain wood, uh, all the way up to using saws, power tools, it's and stuff like super, that. It's super, super cool. We're yes. going to go out and actually do a class, and yes. we're going to air that so we can kind of take you through the process. Your information's all right there. You have some other classes coming up. Yep, if you want to come paint this weekend, uh, you can check out my website, and there's still a couple of tickets left. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you being here. I can't wait to get out there and actually get our hands dirty oh, and yes. do this. Because I'm make you use power tools. It's going to be the whole shebang. It's going to be rough. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> have a great one.